Gmail began as a side project by one of the Google engineers. And when it was released, it offered 1 GB of storage, far more than its competitors. Today, Gmail has become the largest email service provider in the world with more than 1.8 billion users. And with the Gmail MCP server, we can enable cloud desktop or client applications that support MCP to interact with your Gmail account. This helps manage your email workflow, search through your inbox to find specific messages, retrieve and analyze email content, send emails with customized formatting and attachments, or even help clean up your inbox by deleting unwanted messages. This integration opens up numerous possibilities for email automation and workflow. In this video, we will build a Gmail MCP server using Python, which can be used with Cloud Desktop, VS Code, and other MCP compatible client applications by integrating Google Gmail's API. Before we start the tutorial, let me show you a few demos so you can see how the Gmail MCP server performs in Cloud Desktop. Here, I just received an email from USPS today regarding the shipping status of a package. Here in Cloud Desktop, I can say, pull my last email from USPS and tell me about the shipping status. Based on the request, Cloud understands that I am asking a shipping status specific question and it will select the appropriate Gmail functions from the Gmail MCP server to fulfill the request. Another really useful case, at least for me, is I can have Cloud summarize an email to give me just the key points. For example, I can say, summarize the last email from Pet Photography Awards, which is an email from an organization that I haven't read. A very useful MCP toolset if you don't have time or hate managing emails. And that's all the intro and demo I'm going to share. Now let's dive into developing the Gmail MCP server in Python. All right, the first thing we need to do is to set up the Gmail API access. On your browser, navigate to console.cloud.google.com. If you don't have a Google Cloud account, simply create one. It is completely free. And almost all Google Suite APIs like Gmail, Google Sheets, YouTube, or Google Drive are free with unlimited usage as well. Before we can start using any Google API service, we need to create a project first. Click the drop down on the top and click New Project. Give the project a name and create the project. Once the Google Cloud project is created, select the project. To enable Gmail API access, on the navigation menu under APIs and Services, select Library. In the search bar, search for Gmail API. Click Gmail API and enable the API service. To view the usage limit, under quotas and system limits, for the Gmail API, you can make 1500 API calls per minute, which is far more than you need. The next step is to set up an OAuth consent screen. On the navigation menu, under APIs and services, select OAuth consent screen. The Google Cloud OAuth consent screen is a prompt that informs users about who is requesting access to their data and what kind of data they're allowing your app to access. Click Get Started. Give the app a name and follow the instructions. For the audience type, choose External. When you create an app, the app will be in development mode until you publish the app publicly. To grant the app permission to users, on the navigation menu, select Audience. In the Test Users, click Add Users and add the user email who will have access to the app. And the last step to set up Gmail API access is to create an OAuth client account. On the navigation menu, select Clients. An OAuth client is a credential that your application uses to request access tokens or ID tokens from Google's OAuth 2.0 endpoint. Think of the client ID like your app's unique username. 
and the client secret is your app's password, which adds an extra layer of security. Now on the top, click Create Client. For the application type, select Desktop App. Give the client account a name and create the account. Once the OAuth client is created, download the client JSON file in your project directory. At this point, we are done setting up the Gmail API in Google Cloud Console. Let's move on to the Gmail MCP server development. To start with the development, launch a terminal and install the MCP and Google Python libraries. When it comes to developing utility tools, I prefer to keep the tool modules separate from the MCP server scripts. In your project directory, create a folder named Tools. Inside the Tools directory, create another folder called Google. This is where I'm going to store all Google Suite related API modules. Now in the Google folder, create three files called init.py, googleapis.py, and gmailtools.py. Open the googleapis.py file. Inside the Google APIs module, import the Python dependencies and create the create service function like what I have on the screen here. So the create service function is a helper function I wrote a few years ago that simplifies Google API service creation. Basically, using this function, we only need to pass an API name, API version, and scopes to set the permissions to create a Google API service object. If we just quickly glance over the source code, basically the function checks if a token session file exists. If yes, then restore the session using the token session file. If not, launch the authentication flow and have the user log in and grant permissions to the app and store the authentication session as a session token file. We then use the build function to create the Google service object. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now let's work on the Gmail tools module. In the script, import the required Python dependencies and the create service function. To keep the email records organized, create two data model classes inherited from base model and define the relevant fields to be used with LLM. So Gmail API returns a lot more fields than what I have here. These are just the attributes I found useful when working with AI models or AI agents. To keep the Gmail tool functions organized, create a class called Gmail tool. I created five Gmail functions to be used in Cloud Desktop and AI agents, which I will go through them one by one. If you have suggestions on what other Gmail functions might be useful, please leave your feedback in the comments below. Also, you don't really need to know too much about how the code works. Cloud will handle that actually, but you do need to know what each function does. For that, I will quickly go through each function and explain the usage and purpose. In the Gmail class, define the class attributes to connect to the Gmail API server. For the Gmail class initialization, we will require user to provide the client secret file and call the init service method to create the Gmail service object. I'm using the mail.google.com scope, which gives Cloud full permission to manage a user's Gmail account. If you want to limit the access, on the Gmail choose scope page, here's the full list of permission sets to choose from. Now let me paste the rest of the methods. The send email method is probably one of the most useful functions in the class. It takes recipient email addresses, a subject, and body content as input, and sends an email through your Gmail account. You can specify whether the body is plain text or HTML, and you can even attach files by providing a list of file paths. Usually, I use this function in Cloud Desktop to help me to reply emails. And here's the rest of the function. And for the function output, we will return the message ID or error message plus the send status. 
the search emails method searches through your Gmail inbox. You can use Gmail search operator to filter the messages based on conditions like date range, recipients, or keywords. I am limiting the search operation to use one label at a time to help with the performance. The max results and next page token parameters are used to control the output size and load the next batch of emails. And if we look at the messages list method here, using the max results parameter, we can return up to 500 items per request. And here's the rest of the function. The get email message details method is another important function to help with email management. The function fetches the details of a specific email message using its ID. We're going to use this method primarily as a helper function to fetch email attributes. So the Gmail API infrastructure hasn't been updated for a long, long time. To be honest, the output structure is a mess. To extract an email's entire text body, I created the get email message body method that uses the extract body method designed to retrieve just the body content of an email. And here's the code base of the extract body function. The last method, delete email message, deletes an email giving the message ID. At this point, we are done with the Gmail tools module. Now open the init.py file. In the init module, type the import statement like what I have shown on the screen. What the import statement does is it eliminates the need to type the Gmail tools module name when we import the Gmail tool class. The last step is to set up the Gmail MCP server. In the project directory, create a Python file named mcpgmail.py. In the script, import the required Python dependencies and create the Gmail tool in fast MCP objects. Then with the MCP object, use the add tool method to add the Gmail function as MCP tools. When you set up the fast MCP object, make sure to specify the Python libraries that are required to use the Gmail functions. So at this point, we are officially done developing the Gmail MCP server. To add the MCP server to Cloud Desktop, on your terminal, run the command MCP install followed by the file name mcpgmail.py. When you add an MCP server to Cloud Desktop, the script will get executed automatically to ensure all the code runs smoothly first. And when the Gmail tool object is being created, it will prompt you to authenticate. Log in to your Gmail account and grant permission to the app to complete the authentication. And once you complete the authentication, you should see the message. The authentication flow has completed. You may close this window. Go ahead and close the tab. Now restart Cloud Desktop. So because Cloud Desktop executable is stored in a different directory, we will need to go to the authentication process again to create the token file that is in the same directory as the client application. Now, if you check the available MCP tools list, you should see the Gmail functions are now available. And if we need to switch to a different Gmail account, we need to delete the session token file first and re-authenticate. What I usually do is navigate to the uh, developer panel first. Click edit config to open Claude Desktop's log directory. Then navigate back to the app data directory. Go into the local directory and in the Anthropic Cloud folder. You should see the app folder where Cloud Desktop's executable is stored. Based on the Cloud Desktop version, go into the app folder and delete the token file in the token files folder. Now let's test the Gmail tools. For the first test, I will have Cloud to send a test email. And based on the request, Cloud will identify this is a task that has to do with email. And since I only have the Gmail MCP server that works with email management, 
Cloud would then select the appropriate function from the Gmail tool server and send the test email. If I refresh my Gmail inbox, and here's the test email sent from Cloud. Another common use case is I can have Cloud pull an email from my email inbox and summarize the email. For instance, let's say I want to know the detail of the last email sent from We, a popular online Asian grocery service. In the prompt, I can say, Pull my last email from We and tell me what the email is about. Using the Gmail search email and get email message body functions, Cloud is able to analyze the email content and summarize the email just like that. And lastly, I will type delete the email to delete the email Cloud just summarize. That concludes this Gmail MCP server development for Cloud desktop tutorial. I hope you find the video useful. If you are a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And if there are any tutorial ideas you have in mind and you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.